Okay, the next technical term is inverse functions. The inverse is when you do the function backwards. So a very simple example was if I define, and I'm going to use the letter F again, different questions so I can do a different function. I'm going to say, okay, this time my function I'm going to define as if I put X in, I'm going to get X minus seven out. Now, I'm going to start by doing it with a machine. So my function F, I start with X, it's telling me to take away seven and I'm going to get out the other end, x minus 7. To find the inverse function, you come in the opposite direction and you do the opposite of what's in your box. So I'm going to start here. So this time I'm going to start here with a value. I'm doing the machine backwards. Instead of take away 7, I'm going to add 7. So out the end, I get the value x plus 7. Now, to show that this is the inverse, the notation is f with a little mind negative 1 at the top. So that's my function. f of x is my function. This is the inverse function, which means it's the function which undoes what the original function did in the first place. So if my original function is x maps onto x minus 7, the inverse function is x maps on to x plus 7. As long as your function only has one step. So, for example, with a function f, this was the only step. The function was take away 7. The opposite of that was add 7. If I make it a bit more complicated, this time I'm going to define my function g to be my function g is 2 times x plus 5, and I want to undo that. Do the same again. Go forwards. So g is, start with x, multiply by 2, add 5, and you'll get 2x plus 5 out the other end. Coming backwards, I'm going to start from this end. If I put a number in, the opposite of add 5 is take away 5. The opposite of multiply by 2 is divide by 2. So out the other end, I get x, take away 5, and divide everything by 2. So my inverse function is x, take away 5, divide by 2. So how would this work as a question? It would be worded something like the function f of x is defined as f of x equals 4x plus 3. Find, first of all, f of 5, and secondly, f inverse of 35. Okay, for part 1, that's just your ordinary function. So my ordinary function to find out what happens when I put 5 in, in place of the x, I'm going to write the number 5. So it's 4 times 5 plus 3, which is 20, plus 3, which is 23. That must seem quite straightforward now. Before I can answer part 2, I have to actually find what the inverse function is. So in order to answer part 2, again, the safest way to do it is to write your little machine... The function f tells me to multiply by 4 and then add 3 and out the other end I get 4x plus 3. To find the inverse, I start from the end, come backwards and do the opposite. I take away 3 instead of multiply by 4, I divide by 4. So when I come out the other end, I've got x take away 3, and then divided by 4. So to find the value of the inverse function of 35, I have to do 35, take away 3, and then divide by 4, which is 32 divided by 4, which is 8. 
Okay, guys, these are to do with inverse functions again. So we're still looking at inverse functions, but sometimes it's quite difficult to know what is the opposite. So, for example, if I say to you, okay, my operation is add 5, then by now you're probably all quite happy that the opposite is take away 5. If I say to you, okay, my operation is multiply by 3, then the opposite of that is divide by 3. So plus and minus always go together, multiply and divide always go together. But those are more complicated ones. Suppose you're going to start with a function, so I have to call this f, and I'm going to tell you to start with a number, and out the other end comes 1 over the number. Now, this 1 over the number has a special word. It's called the reciprocal. So, for example, the reciprocal of 2 is a half, the reciprocal of 7 is 1 over 7, the reciprocal of a third is much more complicated. It's 1 over a third, which is actually 3. I'll show you how that works. So if this line, this 1 over line, you can think of as being divided by. So 1 over 2 really means 1 divided by 2. 1 over 7 means 1 divided by 7. So 1 over a third means 1 divided by a third. When you divide by a fraction, you effectively turn the second number upside down and multiply. So I've turned this upside down. We've got 3 over 1. 1 times 3 over 1 is a 3. Self-inverses. If you're finding the idea of a self-inverse a bit hard to get your head around, just think back to transformations. So we're going to see how a self-inverse operates when you have a more complicated function. So let's define our function as g of x equals 1 over x plus 3. And I want to find the inverse function. So to start off with, I have to write my function in a machine. So it's my function g. I'm starting with x. The first thing I'm going to do is divide into 1. So I'm starting with x and I'm dividing it into 1. Then I'm going to add 3. So out the other end, start with x, divide into 1 and add 3. That's my function g. OK, so coming back the other way to find g inverse... I'm going to start with some random number x. The opposite of add 3 is take away 3. The opposite if divide into 1 is a self-inverse. So it is also divide into 1. And the way I'm going to write that down, I'm going to start with x. I'm going to take away 3. And I have to divide all of that into 1. So if my original function, g of x is 1 over x plus 3, my inverse function is the inverse of x is 1 over x minus 3.